Hello everybody, hope you're all well. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. I'm back with a loft update for you and this is weeks eight and nine. So we are now towards the end of week nine of the loft conversion and so I'm going to be showing you what's been happening over the past couple of weeks and where we are up to with it. You may wonder where I'm sitting at the moment. I'm actually sitting in the ensuite bathroom, the new ensuite in the loft, which is very exciting. It feels great to be sitting in the space. I'm sitting right in front of where the toilet will be and where the sink will be and the shower will be just beside me here. And this is the door which goes into the ensuite, which is the sliding pocket door that so many of you thought would be a good idea to maximize the space in here. So thank you for all of your suggestions as well. There's been so many of you mentioning things that I should be thinking about, considering doing tips, renovation projects you've been doing yourself. So if you haven't already, if you are doing any projects yourself, you want to find out more information, do check out the comments and feel free to comment and interact down there as well because it's so brilliant how everybody's been so supportive but also is sharing knowledge down there as well. So it's always useful to have a little read through the comments and see what other people suggest because yeah, these sort of projects are tricky, aren't they? I'm sure if you've done a renovation yourself, or if you're doing one or planning one, you can relate to that. What I thought we'd do first of all is jump into some footage on my phone. I've just been popping up here most days once the builders have finished and just getting a bit of footage to kind of document the process. So we'll jump into that from the past couple of weeks. I'll pop some voiceover on it or maybe a bit of music or a bit of both. So you can see through that and that'll bring us up to date. And then I will show you around with the camera just where we're up to today. So today is Wednesday, so we are kind of halfway through week nine but I thought as I'm off filming again at the end of this week I would vlog this today and just bring you up to date as best as I can and then maybe the next video or fingers crossed the next video will be when the stairs are going and they have been delayed because of carpenters availability but hopefully they'll be going in on Monday next week so by the end of next week hopefully I'll be able to give you a bit of a tour of the pretty much finished space. It's not going to be a grand reveal or anything like that because I will be taking my time with all the decorating, all the finishing touches, all of that stuff that we love here. So there'll be no rush to do that stuff. We'll be settling in quite slowly, but hopefully it'll be in a position where I can actually show you around properly by the end of next week. So yeah, stay tuned for that. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. And don't forget I upload new videos every single week. So if you have subscribed, don't forget to pop the notification bell on. And that way you will never miss a video when I upload it. Don't forget I'm always over on Instagram as well. It's Mr. Carrington or Mr. Carrington Home. Or you can follow both if you like, see what I'm up to day to day and also see what sort of things I'm up to around the home too. Right, let's jump in and have a look at what's been going on for the past couple of weeks. Am I doing a good job of pretending I'm looking calm, cool and collected? <laughs> Fake it till you make it. <laughs> yes, the past couple of weeks have felt pretty full on at times. Here's a clip of the electric cables going in. So you can see that the walls were dug out and the cables were put in. This was very messy. There was a lot of red dust. There was a lot of plaster boards coming out. Some floorboards had to be ripped up as well in order to put the cables in. We need to have fire alarms on every floor. So those had to be drilled in as well. So yeah, it was a really messy job and a very noisy one too. But up in the loft, things are definitely progressing, as you can see. I'm really happy with how the plaster work is looking. There's just a remaining wall in the loft to do. And then the ensuite bathroom is looking good. The sliding door is in. I know lots of you suggested that. And it was all ready to be boarded. Here's the view of the loft from the ensuite. So you can see how it looks facing the windows. I do think this is going to be such a nice space. So yeah, all of the electrics have gone in and there's space for the light switches and that sort of thing. And cables are hanging down ready to fit lights and also to fit the fire alarms, smoke detectors that are part of the job. The spotlights have gone into the loft as well. Those are ready to be fitted and also the radiator has gone in. I went for this one that I picked up from eBay. They continued work in the bathroom and the plaster went on. Sorry it's a bit dark, I actually shot this clip at 
evening time when I got a moment. But yeah, the shower tray was ready to go in. And then we had some really rainy days. The rain in the UK has been something else this summer, hasn't it? I'm sure if you're a viewer watching from the UK, you can relate to that. But we had some really heavy storms and yeah, it wasn't too bad. We do have the tin roof on, but it did mean that some water was blowing in from the sides. So they couldn't do some of the tiling that they wanted to. And also it did mean that the plants out in the roof garden got a good drink. So I was happy with that. So as you can see, we have some tiling going on in the ensuite. That's why there's some chopped up tiles in the main loft space. And things are starting to really take shape in here now. So the tiles have gone down onto the floor. You can see the waste pipe for the toilet there too. And the shower tray area is this corner. So the floor has been dug out for the waste of the shower. And the tiles have started to go in, so I'm really happy with the tiles that I chose. These are from Tile Giant. And when I do a full loft tour, I will be sure to link everything. More heavy rain. It just seemed to be relentless over the past couple of weeks. Talk about typical British summertime. But yeah, the plants, as I say, were very happy to see it. All the ones I pushed out to one side of the roof garden were very happy to get a drink. So here's another shot of the ensuite as things started to progress. So the tiles were fitted, went right the way up to the ceiling in the shower area. And this is a clip of downstairs. This is the actual electric fuse box. So we had that replaced and then the flooring started to go down. So this is the LVT click flooring. It's a luxury vinyl tile. That's what that stands for in case you were wondering. And yeah, I had to buy the underlay too. So you can pause the screen here if you want a closer look at the instructions and the sizes, dimensions, that sort of thing. And I went for it in medium oak. What do we think? Quite pleased with it. I think it looks like a nice tone. Hopefully it will stand the test of time. And here's another look at those tiles going in. And then here you will see still no stairs. <laughs> Outside the tiles were going on to the dormer. So this is the flat part of the roof that was built out. So we have the dormer wall that was tiled and then the floor continued to go down. So that is pretty much there now. I'm really happy with the positioning of the plugs and I went for these chrome ones. I think they look really nice. So glad I got one in that alcove there as well. I'm just so happy that I did that. And pushed for that because I think it will be really handy to have one in that little alcove. And then you can see here that the flooring goes into the built-in cupboards as well, which I really like. It just looks really neat and nice. And the ceiling where the loft hatch was has been boarded over. So yeah, that brings us up to today. So let me take you around and we'll see how things are looking. It's quite good light today as well, the sun's out. So yeah, hopefully you'll be able to see everything a bit better. Some of the footage was a bit dark, so I've been, whoops. First of all, let's have a look how the ensuite is looking. So there is some plastic down on the floor because the plastering has been going on the past couple of days. So you can see here on the ledge here, the plaster work right up to the window and that's all looking quite nice. I've got the waste pipe installed and the water supply for the toilet. And then over here we have the two water supplies for the sink and then two here for the towel rail. So in the end I went for a sink from eBay. The one from Ikea, there was a bit of a back and forth with that long story, but basically the unit part of it has been out of stock and despite visiting a couple of Ikeas, I have been unsuccessful. So I went for an alternative from eBay, which worked out I think a little bit cheaper actually. It worked out, it was £125, but it arrived slightly damaged. So they actually knocked a little bit of money off for it. And I think that made it total £100. Um, and also had to buy the tap on top of that as well, which I also got from eBay. But what I'll do is a full tour of everything once it's installed. And then when I show you it in that video, I'll list everything in case you're interested um, as to where I got everything from. But yeah, the towel rail will be going here. It's actually a more compact sink that I've ordered in the end as well. So, but you'll see when it's in, but hopefully you will approve of it. So yeah, it's it's looking good in here. I'm really pleased with the tiles and I'm really pleased with the job that they've done, how they've managed to kind of line them up and fit them so that they start at the ceiling. And then at the base here, I think that one's just like slightly shorter than all the others. So it's really neat job how they've done it. I think you sort of notice the top more, don't you? So yeah, I love the way that they've fitted them. I think they've done a really neat job. And so the shower will be going in soon. 
And then moving through into the main space, you can see that the flooring has been going down. This is the vinyl tiles. They're the click ones, so they haven't used any glue. They've just clicked them all into place, which some of you suggested would be a good shout. Because if you want to change it in future, it's easier to lift up. Anyone who has had to lift up tiles that are stuck down, glued down to a floor, you will know that that's not an easy thing to do. I have actually done that in a previous property and it involved chisels, wearing swimming goggles and swear words. <laughs> Don't recommend it. So, as you can see, lots going on in here. There is lots of tools, there is lots of plastic on the floor to protect the new flooring, which I'm pleased to see. We want to keep that really nice, don't we? Yeah, they've been getting on with starting to put the skirting into position. And take a look down there, they've had to go at an angle to fit around the wall, which is brilliant. They're doing a really fine job everywhere of making everything really nicely finished, which I'm really pleased with. They are great with the attention to detail, actually. Oh, I've just spied a tool station brochure. I could spend hours looking through that. <laughs> so yeah, this is all looking good. They've popped a little screw in here. I guess that's where the uh, knob will be eventually. I'll probably just get them to leave a hole there for me so that I can add my own. How about that? They've gone in with the flooring too, which I'm very pleased about. What do we think of the floor? Very difficult to choose flooring and it's difficult to see what tone this is actually. It's coming up a bit more purpley on camera. Not that it looks purple. To the eyeball, <laughs> at this time of day, it's almost got a slightly olive green tone to it, but on camera, it's coming up with a slightly pinky tone. So there we are. And the skirting board will be painted white, of course. So yeah, that's just being fitted at the moment. And you can see the skirting is continuing around that side and the radiator is in position. We are still without stairs. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully next week. Looks like the Alcatrave for the door is ready to go on or has come off for some reason. I'm not sure what's going on here, but yeah, it looks like it's to go on, I think. Very pleased with this sort of detail where we've gone with the shape of the original chimney and kept this detail in the alcoving in here. At the moment, it's tricky to pick it up on camera actually, the camera does not like facing white walls, <laughs> it kind of gives up on the focus, it has nothing to focus on. But yeah, this kind of um, extra detail I just think makes the space kind of look like it's been here for longer, I feel like it feels more part of the kind of original building. So I'm so pleased that we didn't just go for the cheaper option, which was to just board straight the way across this wall, which would have been, yeah, cheaper. But paying the extra to get this all done nicely, I think was well worth it. And also can give us some additional shelving space. Yeah, there's all sorts of things that we can do with this. So really pleased and, you know, living in London, space comes at a premium, as we all know, so every square foot counts, especially when we're talking about storage as well, you know, we are losing storage space, of course, by having the loft. It was just the whole loft for storage before, whereas now we're limited to a couple of cupboards and anything that we add to this room. So any little nooks and crannies like this are so handy. I mean, that in itself, I wouldn't do this because obviously I wouldn't want them on display, but you could easily get a suitcase in there, you could get a hoover in there, not that you would, but you know what I'm saying, it's it's useful to have. So yeah, thinking maybe, imagine at Christmas time, little Christmas tree tucked in there. We've got the plug, so we're good to go. <laughs> and one of you was suggesting that you could put an electric fire in there, which is actually such a good shout. You can get those traditional style ones. If it was chilly in here in the winter time, you could easily pop one to one side and have that kind of feel of a little wood burner up here, which could look really sweet. And I'm so glad that I put my foot down and insisted on this plug. It was a slightly awkward conversation because I think there was miscommunication, but I was insistent because I felt like we needed one here on this wall with not having one over in this corner and having one in this corner, I didn't think that would be enough. I didn't want to have any cables coming across if we put a desk here. So I'm really pleased that we've got the option of that one too. That is one thing that I don't particularly enjoy with this sort of thing. It's the constant having to ask for stuff and having to repeat yourself and having to be quite firm and specific and you feel like you're asking a lot all of the time. I guess it depends on how comfortable you feel at dealing with people and that sort of thing, and I'm fine with it, but sometimes it can just feel like, oh, I've asked for about five things already today, and I have to go and ask them for another thing, or pick up another thing, or point at another thing, or comment on another thing. 
and yeah trying to sort of obviously be positive and keep everybody motivated at the same time as going oh i'm not quite sure about that can be tricky <laughs> but we're getting there we're all getting on still um so yeah i think i've pretty much showed you where we're at so let me know down in the comments how you think it's looking i'm really pleased with how everything is looking by the way i don't know if i showed you the new light switches in the end they were going to put just like the standard white ones in which are perfectly nice aren't they but then i thought maybe it would be worth just getting these. And I went to a local hardware shop and I picked these up for, I think they were just like 10 pounds or something for each light switch, which really in the grand scheme of things is so little money, but those are the sort of things where we must remember like at the last minute not to scrimp on too much and go, oh, I'll have the white ones because those are 3 99 That's the sort of thing my brain does, but you know that I'm thrifty. <laughs> so I'll be like, get the cheapest, but then you think, right, we're talking probably one of the smallest priced items in the entire loft conversion process. It might be worth spending an extra fiver on those as they are one of the first things that you see as you walk into the room and put your finger on. So we have gone for a slightly more expensive option with the chrome effects or the chrome, whatever you want to call it. And I've also done the same with the plugs. So yeah, however, you'll laugh because it got to this bit and I thought, oh, do you know what? I forgot to get one of those and I thought it's out of sight, <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. But what I will actually do with this, if we go with a colour on this wall, I'll paint over that because it's kind of a bit weird up there anyway, isn't it? So yeah, we won't worry about our mate, the extractor switch. <laughs> we'll let him off. Some people are very much like if it's chrome light switches, you have to have chrome handles. You have to have chrome accents on everything. I'm not of that opinion, actually. I think you can definitely mix and match them. And I think you need to look at the overall space and the overall room and just look at things like tones and styles as well, of course, because you can mix and match styles. You could have chrome light switches and get chrome door handles, but your chrome light switches could be quite traditional looking and then you get chrome door handles that are kind of modern monstrosities and they just don't go together. So even though they're both chrome, in my opinion, they wouldn't be a vibe together. They're not friends. <laughs> Whereas I think you could go chrome light switch and have a brass doorknob, but because the brass doorknob is in keeping, say with the Victorian property, they can still work in the same space because the doorknobs feel like they're already belonging in the space and then the new things which are the light switches, am I making any sense at all, are kind of introduced because these sort of light switches weren't here in the Victorian times, were they? That's an example for you. I don't know if I'm making any sense whatsoever, but basically what I'm trying to say to you is that I am not very specific in terms of matching stuff like that. It doesn't bother me. I just go with my, what I think will be fine together. Just know that we're gonna flash forward to next week's update and I'll be crying in B&Q because the only doorknobs they've got it left in stock are chrome ones, very modern, not up for my street. And I popped them in the basket because I've been around seven different hardware stores in search of doorknobs. You know it's going to happen, don't you? <laughs> you should probably get on and order them. But anyway, and I'm going to finish the vlog now. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do give it a little thumbs up. And if you're new here, don't forget to click subscribe for new videos every single week. I've got lots more videos on the way for you, so do stay tuned and I will see you very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.